College football is back, the season kicking off, and our first big game to look out for next Sunday night, LSU and Florida State, a game you can watch right here on WLOX ABC. Here to break it all down for you and what you can expect this season, former director of player personnel for Nick Saban at Alabama, Tyler Siski. Tyler, you also were on the staff two different times at Ole Miss under Hugh Freeze and Matt Luke. Thanks for joining us. Let's get right into it. We're going to talk about the uh, in-state teams here in Mississippi as far as Ole Miss goes. The Rebels returning Quinshawn Judkins, the running back. He broke all kinds of records last year. Also, the quarterback Jackson Dart, plus as always, Lane Kiffin brought in a bunch of transfers. What's the ceiling for Ole Miss this year? Um, I think uh, the ceiling for these guys I think really depends on uh, their depth, how they can run the gamut through the season. They can roll out uh, 11 guys on both sides and cause you problems. As long as they stay healthy, um, they have enough weapons on offense. They can outscore you any week, obviously. And then defensively with a new scheme, I think uh, goes on, they'll be better. Uh, I'm really excited about Pete Golden being there. I, I really like Pete. I think he's one of the best uh, teachers of the game. And uh, let me ask you this. What is, what is it like coaching a game on the field at Mississippi State with the Cowbells? Uh, depends on who you're there with. Um, I've, I've been there, I guess, with three different teams. I've been there with South Alabama. Uh, which we were able to win. Uh, it wasn't very loud, but I've been in there with Alabama and with Ole Miss, and it gets it gets kind of rowdy. It's uh, you do not want to uh, you want to take your BC powders before you go in because it starts ringing your headset. So it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. So with the I Bulldogs, of course, Mike Leach passing away. Unfortunately, Zach Arnett comes in. He's got an experienced quarterback there with Will Rogers, but uh, low expectations for Mississippi State picked last in the SEC West, but I think they're a sleeper team. What do you think? Uh, same. I, I really like Zach Arnett. I've, I got a chance to coach against him uh, when he was at San Diego State. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm a big, huge, I'm a, I'm a football junkie, but I'm a big fan of uh, Kevin Barbe, their new offensive coordinator. I think he's one of the uh, young and upcoming bright stars um, in the business, and he finds a way to score points regardless of his personnel. So I'm really excited to see those guys and what they do this season. Looking at Southern Miss, I know you know Will Hall. He's going into his third year, I believe. Last year in a lot of games, the Eagles didn't even have a quarterback, but they found a way to win games. They're facing a tough schedule this year, but in the Sun Belt's better as always. Do you feel like Southern Miss is going to be able to move up in the Sun Belt this season? Yeah, I, th I, th I like what Will, Will's been doing since he got there, building his roster and the way he recruits, uh, one with just his roots in the state of Mississippi and how he's able to see guys and develop them. Um, you know, they're, they got a transfer quarterback. Uh, they have a good team. They're going, they're, you know, they're not in the coaching world. They're not sneaking up on anybody, but I look for them to have a really big year. I'm a big Will Hall fan, always have been. I love him as an offensive mind known him for a long time, and I just like the way he runs his programs. He's a winner. He's won everywhere he's ever been at every level. He'll, he'll win at Southern Miss as well. So in the back to the SEC, a lot of people are starting to pick LSU to win the SEC West. It would be the second year in a row. But Tyler, do you really think Nick Saban and Alabama are not going to win the SEC West for a second year in a row? I'm not going to pick against uh, Coach Saban ever. I'm not going to pick against Georgia ever until they I'm, I'm going to be right more than I'm wrong. Right. So, um, look, I think that the SEC West in particular, but really the SEC as a whole, uh, there's really not a gimme game. You know, you've got to bring it every week. I think the, the season, who wins and who loses is going to come down to injuries and who's who's the healthiest for the longest and then who can overcome adversity. I think that's a big thing is because I, I don't I don't know if there's going to be any team that just runs the gamut very easily. There's, everybody's going to face adversity. How do they respond um, each and every week? And you have to bring it every week in this league, and that's, that's what makes it special. So the big game coming up next week, the first one that everybody's going to be watching, LSU and Florida State. You can watch that right here on our channel, WLOX, by the way. Do you have a take there on that game? Do you feel like LSU last year lost the game in a close one? How do you feel like that game is going to play out? I mean, it's uh, anybody that tells you they know how it's going to turn out's uh, got probably a little bit of lunacy in their head. But look, I, I think LSU losing Mason Smith for the first game is going to affect them. Um, their their young secondary is going to get tested early. Um, I, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Jordan Travis at Florida State, Mike Norvell, what he's built there in a, in a quick period of time. Uh, those are two good teams, and if there's ever a, a an early season ball game that has national title implications, this is it. And Really important game from Florida State. I think that if they can win this game, uh, it kind of sets themselves up with LSU. 
you know, it's also the important game because they have to go through the SEC gamut. They have a, a little bit harder regular season road to hoe than Florida State does, but uh, both teams are phenomenal. Both teams will be, I think, imagine it be a close game and be kind of like last year, comes down to the last possession. You mentioned Georgia. You also worked with Kirby Smart, I believe, at Alabama. He's going for his third national championship in a row. If I told you Georgia did not make the college football playoff, what went wrong for the Bulldogs? Um, we're in a different universe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they don't make it. I, they're too talented. Um, they don't have as very uh, difficult a schedule as most people have. Uh, Tennessee's probably their one big hiccup that they got to deal with. Everything else is at home. Um, I, I don't see them. I don't know any way in the planet that they don't make it to the college football playoff. I, I just I don't know what what universe we're in that people say they won't. So I don't know. I think they're good. So, Tyler, since you've been out of coaching, you've gone into business for yourself. Uh, your business is called Quick U, and uh, the way I understand it, you contract with college coaches around the country to help them evaluate high school football players and prospects in general. So taking a look here in South Mississippi, we do have a big year with a lot of highly rated players, including uh, Noriel White from St. Martin. He just committed, as I understand, to Ole Miss. Who are some must-see players here in South Mississippi uh, for high school football? Yeah, look, the coast has always been really, really um, loaded with talent. You know, uh, you mentioned Waller at, at uh, Picayune, uh, Jay Rush that's at Pascagoula uh, in Norway. Obviously, those are going to get a lot of attention, um, as they should. Uh, it, it's just a very uh, unique environment where we live in um, with the NIL and the transfer portal. I think there's a ton more players in the, in the, in the uh, coast, especially the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, that, you know, 10 years ago would be playing in the SEC, but because of let fewer and fewer spots are being taken, it's killing, the portal is killing high school recruiting. But with fewer and fewer spots being um, spent on high school kids, those guys end up going to a Louisiana Tech or wherever. I know there's several kids on the coast committed to Louisiana Tech, but they go to schools like that instead of going to Ole Miss or Mississippi State or Alabama, Auburn, uh, because of the portal. So, you know, very, very talent rich area there on the coast. And you got it. Well, Tyler, thanks for joining us. And uh, if people like what they heard, how can they, you have a show, a weekly podcast, yeah. how can people listen? So we do, we have a podcast we do live at two o'clock on YouTube called McCready and Siski. I do with Neil McCready. Um, it's on the Disrupt Media uh, Network that just got started this last week. And we have shows with, you know, Tom Luganbill, uh, Daniel Jeremiah from the NFL Network, Brock Heward, um, uh, and Peter Burns from the SEC Network all have uh, shows on that channel. I encourage everybody to look at YouTube 2 o'clock on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. All right, Tyler Siski, thanks for joining us. Have a great week. All right, guys, take care. And thank you for joining us here on WLOX News this week. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning.